Hi, welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, my name is Lacey, and I want to talk about the events that took place Saturday night, June 28th, during SF Pride. I was part of organizing the action with Gay Shame. Gay Shame is a queer direct action group that organizes in many capacities and has been responding to the increasing commodification of Pride. This year, we worked with Legay and planned an action in response to Kink.com's party that was being held at the Armory, which was called Prison of Love. We called our res boo. We called our response to this event Prison Breaks, Not Prison Parties, because we believe that fetishizing incarceration normalizes, trivializes, and mocks the violence of the prison industrial complex. Queer and trans POC communities are terrorized by police violence every day, as further made apparent by the ensuing police violence that occurred about 30 minutes after the demonstration was over. At this BART station, we were leaving and found ourselves attacked and brutalized by the SFPD. Seven of us were arrested, and three queer and or trans, thank you, I'm really off the cuff, people, uh, uh, people of color remained in custody for the following four days. There was nothing worth fetishizing about the events that happened to these community members. The brutality from the SFPD needs to stop immediately. We demand an end to the violence of prisons and the police state. Woo! 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 And we continue to support each other to advance the struggle for a world without prisons. We will continue to work for abolition, liberation, and decolonization. Um, our next Gay Shame meeting is going to be Saturday at 5 p.m. at Modern Times Bookstore on 24th Street. All are welcome. Um, so thank you. Our next speaker is going to be Rachel from the National Lawyers Guild. Hi, I'm Rachel Letterman. I'm an attorney with the National Lawyers Guild. And the National Lawyers Guild is condemning SFPD for the wrongful arrest and incarceration, incarceration of queer prison abolition activists Saturday night. The demonstration was over and activists were on their way home when the police made um, seven brutal arrests near 16th Street BART right here. Despite there being no basis whatsoever for the arrest, three people were held in jail for three full days. Although we're happy that those three have finally been released, we're calling on the DA to conclusively close the case against all of the arrestees. Along with all of the arrests, we condemn the arrest of our legal observer, who is still facing a possible charge of obstruction for providing legal information to the people who are being brutally arrested. The National Lawyers Guild dispatches legal observers to monitor civil liberties and promote people's constitutional right to assemble. The SFPD's groundless arrest of a legal observer is an unacceptable attack on our program, and we demand that all charges be dropped against all of these people. The, the Lawyers Guild is prepared to take all legal action necessary to defend the activists and prevent a recurrence of SFPD's unconstitutional and violent attack on free speech. Next up is Tori from the Gay. Hello. I'm Tori. I'm, <laughs> I'm from La Gay Queer Insurrection, which is an anti-assimilationist, queer liberation direct action group that started in 1983. We are against the prison industrial complex. We want an end to all prisons. We send over a thousand copies of our newsletter, Ultraviolet, to queers in prison throughout the U.S. Prisons are oppression, not some cute, groovy party about getting raped in the shower. And that's why we participated in organizing the march and demonstration at Kink this Saturday. The cops brutally, unjustly, at the bidding of Kink, arrested our comrades after our demonstration was completely over. But we finally got our comrades back. Drop all the remaining charges and compensate the abolition six Power to the queer people! Free them all! Free them all! Hi, I'm Priska. Um, just here to say that uh, Saturday night after protest, I was brutally attacked by a mob of cops, slammed to the ground. 
um, pretty much just absolutely um, ultra violence um, as a result of this like queer transphobic police state that um, is, um, that we live in and yeah that's what happened so I'm here today to uh, just reach out and say that we are pro-sex and anti-prison um, and we're here to abolish the prison state that's all I really have to say Rebecca. Um, hi everyone. Um, I, I, I think a lot of you know me from anti-police brutality work, ironically. Um, I guess I want to thank all the prison abolitionists and, and feminists and anti-gentrification activists who pressured the SFPD to let me out. Um, give your yourselves a round of applause, please. Thanks. Um, I think this, this situation really highlighted to me how important it is for a radical community, even like progressive community, to have a much more sophisticated critique on how um, capitalism and um, criminalization and, and sex positivity can intersect in San Francisco. Um, and I think as, um, as sex positive activist. It's been really challenging to try and um, raise awareness about the multi-million dollar corporation <laughs> on 14th and Mission Street <laughs> um, because that's what that's what kink is. It's a huge capitalist organization um, that's basically exploiting the criminalization of people of color um, to make even more money. Um, and that's the, what they were doing Saturday night when we were arrested. Um, I think it's really um, I think it's really telling that kink.com can um, pay hundreds, people pay hundreds of dollars for a ticket to go to this party where they're like uh, fictitiously arrested for like playful fun while the like trans Latinas who are around literally like the two block radius of kink.com are constantly criminalized. Um, so I don't find, I mean, I'm not shocked that uh, three, like, um, three Bay Area residents of Latin American descent were uh, arrested and brutalized on um, Saturday, including myself. Um, so I, I guess I just wanna, I wanna thank everyone for coming out. Um, I'm still kind of shook up from um, Saturday. Um, I, I've never been strip searched before. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, it was the first thing I said was when when uh, I got on the phone with like our support committee was like, this is nothing like that party. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I just want to thank everyone for their support um, for coming out. Next, we have Misha and Jeremy with the Idris Deli Foundation. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let me let the youngsters start first. Uh, I'd like to begin by thanking everyone for being here today, thanking everyone who uh, came out to support Rebecca, Prisca, and Sarai in their struggle. I want to acknowledge the gay and gay shame for an amazing action. <laughs> and uh, for help raising the bar of awareness here in our community. And I want to, uh, I want to address here the fact that this is not and has never been about sexual morality. It's been, I've read a few articles, it's been panned this, this way. At issue is not what anyone's private fantasy may or may not be. At issue is that in the service 
of a trite and tired prison fantasy trope. Real people were really brutalized and real people were really incarcerated. And to those who enjoy such fantasies, did it help? Did you get off more when real people were raped by justice? Did you get off more when people were really actually incarcerated? There's no judgment of your fantasy. But as much as people fought in the last few days for their alleged freedom of speech, right to pretend that they are in prison for sexual gratification, where are you now standing for the rights of the people against police terror? But you are here right now, and I am very grateful to see the community out here right now. What, ha what occurred on Saturday night at the hands of security of Kink.com and the San Francisco Police Department was shameful. The delay in releasing the prisoners come emanating from the district attorney's office was shameful. The fact that we still live in 2014 in a society that seems to think that the exploitation of our bodies in places where rape is commonplace, where forced sterilization occurs, is something enjoyable and something to be fetishized should make us all take a step back and wonder. But I am very grateful, and I'll pass the mic to Misha, I am very grateful that our friends and comrades have been released, that they are in health, and thank you all. How you doing? Make no mistake about it, look around. This is San Francisco. This is the place that we all came for. Forty years ago, I came here fleeing political oppression and heterosexual oppression. This is the place where I decided to, as a Bush lesbian to have a child. And I didn't use a turkey baster, okay? I had a child. <laughs> this is the place where I bought a house for him. Now, 13 years ago, the pigs shot him 48 times inside of the Metron, and last year, the pigs got his house. We are still here. We ain't going nowhere. You reach on, my queer people, okay? This is what San Francisco was meant to be. This is what San Francisco will be again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up is Leslie from the People's Community Medics. Uh, hi. Um, I wrote a little something here. Uh, it says that the Gay Shame 3 had a victory because of the power of the people, of the community activists who came forward to uh, get our friends out of jail. But you know, unfortunately, um, most folks' encounters with the criminal injustice system has a different ending. You know, they can't bail out or get OR. They have no community of activists behind them and the absurdity and cruelty of keeping one in cage for 72 hours, not counting weekends or holidays, before arraignment has got to go, just as the whole prison industrial complex must be abolished. And it will be, by the power of the people. You know, I was wondering um, about some of those party goers, you know, when they heard about this protest, what were they thinking? You know, would they really want to change places with any of the hundreds of people in California prisons who are in real solitary confinement and who stay there for, for decades, for up to 40 years, like political prisoner Hugo Pinnell? You know, role play is fun, but would they really want to be in a California penitentiary getting raped for real? Of course not. Of course not. They wouldn't. So, you know, the time is now for people to wake up to these horrors of mass incarceration. 
You know, our founder, one of our co-founders of the People's Community Medic's brother, Antoine Thomas, is also a political prisoner. And he's serving 65 years for a crime that he didn't commit. You know, and his case is really like, uh, it mirrors some of the many cases that we hear about in the news when people are exonerated. You know, these are folks who've served many years in prison and it, just like him, they've had in, ineffective counsel, defense counsels who are often public pretenders, who are overworked and who could care less about them, prosecutorial misconduct, tampering with evidence, withholding evidence, blatant racist judges and jury who, who are not of our peers. That's just, you know, briefly what the system is really about and what happens to black people, brown people, people of color, poor people. So we say, what's the call? Free them all! So thank you. Thank you, Gay Shane. Thank you, LeGay and Rebecca, Priska, and Sarai for being prison abolitionists. Much love and rage. All power to the people. Thank you. Okay, would someone from TGIJP like to speak? Is there anyone in the audience? Hi, my name is Janetta Johnson. This is Danny and this is Storm Miguel. Um, we're with TGIJP, Transgender Gender Variant Intersex Justice Project, and we work with transgender people that are in custody and getting out of custody and at high risk for being arrested for being um, for just being uh, trans people of color and low income. So th that's kind of how this situation affects us. Uh, with our brothers and sisters being placed in custody for just uh, exercising their voice. And I'm going to pass it over to Danny, and she's going to tell you a little bit about. Hi, y'all. Let's give it up for my auntie, Mr. Nana Johnson, here, program director of TGI Justice Project. So like she was saying, we're here today because of the day-to-day -day criminalization of transgender, gender-variant, intersex, queer people. We're here because of the day-to-day -day policing coming down on our folks as we're trying to live and make it under this system. We're here because of the surveillance that happens when we're coming home that restricts us from being able to build national movement building, international movement building when we gotta check in with our people. We're, we're here because the way this system keeps its foot on our necks, keeps our, our freedom power suppressed, and we're here because we wanna continue building with y'all. You know, a TGI Justice Project in some of the conversations building up around this uh, kink.com party, you know, we uh, authored and then co-released with a, a really large spread of uh, coalition partners a letter speaking out against the Armory. We are proud to, to be in conversation with uh, Gay Shame and LeGay as this action was sort of coming together. But we're not surprised by the police action that happened there. We are outraged. We were outraged at the party. We were outraged at the defense of the party. Dear, dear goodness. And we were outraged at the distraction of the party, right? This party took up a lot of our time and energy, right? In the time that this party happened and we were gearing up to protest this party, the public comment period for CDCR's new uh, censorship regulations came and went, right? How many people here took the opportunity to speak up and shame the CDCR for their, for their new policy that's gonna keep organizations like TGI, like California Coalition for Women Prisoners, like Critical Resistance, our newsletters might get blocked out because of what CDCR is putting forward. Who here spoke out against that? Let's be proud. Thank you. Next round, we're getting more hands up. We're coming for you. We're going together. We're here now and we're building. We're also pissed and upset and outraged and sad because of what happened this month in our community. So we're going to take a moment of silence. We're going to read out the names of our four trans sisters, four trans women of color. One was murdered every week this month. One trans woman of color was murdered every week this month. Miss Candy Hall was age 40 in Baltimore, Maryland. Zareta Reyes was an international organizer in the Undocu queer movement. She was murdered at age 28 in Anaheim, California. Yasmin Sanchez was found murdered after being tortured in Fort Myer, Florida at the age of 31. Tiffany Edwards was murdered, found murdered in, in Cincinnati, Ohio at the age of 28. Four black and brown trans women of color murdered under the age of 40 this month, our Pride Month. 
we got to react to that. It's people power time, no more. It's our lifetimes, we're going to win. So this is what we're saying, right? Because we refuse to go anywhere. TGI Justice is here with y'all. We're building with our folks inside. We're bringing them home. We're keeping them home. We're building our power for reentry. We're building our power, keeping our people safe. And we want y'all to take action with us. So we've got three kind of directions we're pointing in. We want no new San Francisco jail. No new jails in San Francisco. So I want y'all to go home. I want you to take some time. Maybe it takes you till Friday. You know, it's Wednesday. You might not do it tonight. You might not do it tomorrow, Friday, maybe Monday. Contact the supervisor that you're connected to. You live in San Francisco. You work in San Francisco. You have a buddy that has an apartment in San Francisco. Contact their supervisor. Tell them no new jail in San Francisco. You're in, an or, you're in a union, you're part of a movement-based organization, pass a resolution saying no new jail in San Francisco. If you need more information about any of that, check out Curb's website, curbprisonspending.org. Second big ask, second big direction we're moving in here, we're saying not one more. In the honor of Zareta Reyes, in the honor of all our people, all our sisters at LA Pio Trans Latina, we're saying not one more deportation. Not one more. Not one more. Not one more. And so in that, right, there's one particular ask I want to highlight for y'all. I know a lot of y'all probably busy, but tomorrow morning at 10.30 over in Oakland at the Federal Building, I don't know how many people heard about the, the far right's action yesterday in Murrieta, California. They stopped a bus of folks. Uh, the far right's mobilizing a very active way to stop the, the community power building, the, the hosting. I'm a little unclear about the exact story about what all happened, but basically the far right stopped a bus of um, migrant families in a very like racist, bright, bright power kind of move. And so uh, this organization, East Bay Immigrant Youth Coalition, is calling on all of us, right? Like that's our family as trans folks, as queer folks, as all the people, and we're coming for them, we're bringing them home, we're keeping them home. So we're saying, meet at the Oakland Federal Building at 10.30 tomorrow morning for this, uh, for this press conference and action hosted by our comrades there. And El La Para Trans Latina is going to be there and asked ask us to announce that for y'all also. So we're saying end all deportations, end ICE and police collaboration, and let's keep addressing the disproportionate impact of these immigration policies in the queer and trans community. Lastly, we're inviting you to come out every Tuesday night over at our office sharing space with St. James Infirmary. Every Tuesday night, TGI Justice Project's writing letters to our comrades inside. Come build with us, build trans and queer power, be in relationship with our folks and be transformed by it. And let's keep bringing more and more and more, more people home, drop all the charges, free them all. When I say no more prisons, you say no more closets. No more prisons. No more closets. No more prisons. No more closets. No more prisons. No more closets. All power the people. Um, at this point, I'd like to open it up for questions. So what we know right now is that um, charges can be pressed over the next year. This is direct from the lawyer. And so that's what we need to guard against, to ensure that no charges are brought before our friends and that there is nothing that comes of this because this was a joyful protest in the public service. And any other questions, we encourage you to be directed to the lawyer because we want to make sure nobody else goes to prison. The people who were cited out that night who didn't get taken down to the Hall of Justice, their charges are were misdemeanors, so they were cited out. Those have not been dropped. The hope is that they will. But just the, the people who were incarcerated, their charges were completely dropped. So we're asking everyone to continue pressuring SFPD to drop charges. We were um, we were released pending investigations. So please continue to to pressure um, authorities. Oh, so one thing we wanted to do, we know that this movement is building. We need to end prisons, and for that we need work, we need people, we need community. So one idea we had is if you could turn to two or three people around you and talk about things that you could do. One, two, three things you personally can do to bring about the abolition of prisons. So please, we'd like to close our press release. With that, the work is before us. We want to ensure that nobody ever goes to prison again. And those people that are there, we free them all. We free them all. So with that, if you could, this is time to get your next hot date, or if not the head, not 
if not the next hot date, at least your next revolution meeting. So please, turn to the two or three people near you and plan your next steps. How can we end prison forever? Thank you for joining us. Woo!